Good afternoon and welcome to the Melanoma Research Foundation's Ask the Expert series uh, with our partners over at My Victory. Uh, the Ask the Expert series is a virtual live broadcast program to continue to educate and engage the melanoma community. As we continue to educate the nationwide community about the seriousness of melanoma and the critical need for research to continue, we invite our partners to join us in this initiative. And today's partner, as I mentioned, is My Victory. Uh, with us today, we have Dr. Terry. Dr. Terry earned his MD at Jefferson Medical College in 2014, followed by residency training at Brown University with Hasbro Children's and Rhode Island Hospital. Chris completed and combined residency program in internal medicine and pediatrics, followed by a year as chief resident with the Brown Internal Medicine Program. And he is receiving his fellowship training at the Thomas Jefferson University in Hematology and Medical Oncology with the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center, and is here to talk with us about exercise and survivorship. Welcome, Dr. Terry. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to uh, be part of this. Absolutely. And as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about exercise and survivorship, which is such an important conversation because many will say that, you know, exercise can start at diagnosis and identify that way. But as a three-time cancer survivor myself, we know that survivorship is a never-ending revolution and oftentimes miss some key things we need in order to have better, longer lives. So I'd love to have a brief conversation with you about, you know, what survivorship is and how exercise is incorporated. So first, would you tell us what exactly is survivorship? Sure, of course. Uh, and again, I agree, this is a really important conversation for us to have. Um, I think survivorship can mean something different to a lot of different people. Uh, ultimately, the way that uh, the National Can Cancer Institute identifies survivorship is, as you mentioned, um, beginning at the time of diagnosis and all the way through uh, the end of life. And it's really about the well, your well-being um, throughout that time. Um, so that's both your physical health, your mental health, emotional health, any financial stresses that come up, um, including your relationships with your family and friends. So survivorship really encompasses um, your general well-being and um, kind of and your experience and journey with cancer from diagnosis to end of life. It also includes um, follow-up care, obviously. So uh, checkups, um, the risk of secondary cancers, uh, any side effects that you may have developed throughout your uh, cancer treatment that may be sticking with you and impacting uh, your quality of life. Um, so to me, again, it's, it's really individualized. And I think it's important for every patient or individual to um, kind of decide what survivorship means to them. Um, you know, when, when you get a cancer diagnosis or you're getting treatment, it can be very overwhelming. And so trying to create a space where you can clear your mind and really think about your own values and what's most important to you as you go through your journey with cancer, both during treatment and beyond, identifying those values and then having um, your medical team, your support team help you to really focus on, on those values and, and maximizing um, your quality of life. That's, that to me is survivorship, is really identifying your values and, and um, focusing on your own well being. Great. And speaking of identifying your values and, and knowing really when to start into your journey of survivorship, when did oncologists first start seeing the impacts of survivorship in cancer patients? Yeah, I think it's certainly been a trend where we are now focusing much more on, on survivorship and how we can play um, an important role in, in improving individuals' experience with cancer. Um, I think, quite honestly, patients have kind of taken the lead in general in terms of advocating for themselves and creating support groups. Uh, but the medical community is, is coming along, and, and I think we're doing a much better job of, of supporting patients during this. And I think really what we recognize, you know, initially, cancer is such a devastating disease, and initially our focus was on treating and, and curing the cancer in whatever cases we could. Uh, and now as we've done a better job of that, patients are living longer, fuller lives. 
um, we've now shifted some of our focus towards again maximizing um, our the patient's quality of life uh, and making sure that um, we minimize side effects and things like that. Now that we know we have effective treatments, the next step is to minimize the side effects. Um, the next step is to know what we need to look out for in the long run. So um, as we've done a better job treating and um, addressing cancer, uh, we've seen new responsibilities in terms of addressing survivorship and helping out with survivorship moving forward. That's really interesting. I know as a survivor myself, there tends to be a lot of challenges that come, um, especially, um, you know, even years after you have finished your treatment. And it can be very hard on the person and feel like they can never, you know, kind of break three, free of their diagnoses um, because they're always turning their head and having to go back to the doctor's office often. Um, but, you know, I, I know as myself being melanoma and leukemia, I've suffered from several challenges such as lymphedema, um, especially a lot of melanoma patients do suffer from lymphedema um, and our rare subtypes, you know, there's a broad range of different um, challenges that they face as well, especially ocular melanoma, missing an eye and depth perception, et cetera. What would you say some of the most common challenges amongst cancer survivors are and specifically maybe even melanoma survivors? Yeah, and, and so certainly, you know, you mentioned how cancer, when you get that diagnosis, um, whether you, it's unfortunate and whether you want to accept it or not, it's gonna be part of your life uh, moving forward. Even if, you, if, if you're in remission or your doctor says you're cured from it, it's still a significant part of your life. It's a challenge that you had to face, that you had to deal with and cope with. It's something that's always gonna be in, in the back of your mind. Um, and things that you're going to need to follow up with. So I think, again, that's kind of, that's the, that stresses the importance of really learning how to um, handle this new challenge in cancer throughout your journey and throughout your survivorship, as we, as we spoke about. Um, certainly, um, so lymphedema is something that you mentioned that you, you struggled with. Um, that's certainly something that we can see. Um, and we know that physical activity actually helps relieve some of those symptoms. Um, in general, physical activity, we know cancer aside has many benefits, both, both physically and mentally. Uh, and I think that we are now starting to adopt this idea into exercise oncology as well, um, meaning incorporating physical activity um, to make sure that, uh, to, to help improve our experience with cancer. Um, and this, this field is growing tremendously, so it can help reduce things like fatigue, um, help reduce anxiety, depressive symptoms, um, and really improve your overall quality of life. So many of those challenges that go along with uh, dealing with cancer during the treatment phase, as well as be onward and in, into survivorship can be addressed by um, staying physically active and um, also keeping a healthy mind at the same time. Great, yeah, I know. Um... You know, a long, long, long time ago when I was a cancer patient, um, you know, health and exercise and survivorship and the, even the word survivorship wasn't as big of a thing as it is now. And it's really grown over the years and just the, the research and the science behind survivorship and how we can, you know, help to alleviate some of the common symptoms of you know, what we've been bombarded with as cancer patients. Um, it's really taken leaps and bounds since back in the day. So I'm, I'm curious, like how would you describe the state of what we know about the role of, of exercise now for people with cancer and for long-term survivors? And why would you say that exercise is so important to a su successful, if there is even such a thing, successful survivorship? Yeah, and I, I, I certainly think there is such a, such a thing as successful survivorship. I think, again, identifying those values and trying to live life to the fullest, um, regardless of where you are on your cancer journey, is, 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 a, is, a, is a success. So um, I certainly think that's the case. Uh, in terms of the field, I mentioned the field of exercise oncology. So that is what we consider um, incorporating physical activity into um, your cancer journey. And the field has grown tremendously, um, you know, over the last decade, really. There's been over a thousand uh, randomized clinical trials now about 
uh, using exercise as an intervention to help you um, in your in your battle with cancer. Um, you know, it, the narrative used to be, you have a cancer diagnosis, please rest, get your treatment, we're gonna help you get, we're gonna help you feel better. And now we know that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, recently, our recommendations were really just to avoid inactivity, um, but really just around this time last year, actually October, 2019, the American um, College of Sports Medicine got together uh, with a lot of world renowned experts to come up with some new guidelines. Uh, and they now recommend doing um, at least a half hour of aerobic exercise. So when we think about exercise, we think of aerobic and resistance training. Aerobic is really what gets your heart rate up, um, gets the blood pumping and oxygen delivery throughout the body. Um, whereas resistance training is actually using um, some weight or can be body weight, it can be a bottle of water, whatever, um, to get some resistance. So the current recommendation is a half hour of aerobic exercise um, up to three times a week. And then also twice weekly resistance training um, with like eight to 10 reps of something that you're using again, some, some kind of resistance training. And what that has shown is again, it improves quality of life, um, reduces depression, depression symptoms, anxiety, fatigue, um, improves overall physical functioning. It also um, can lead to decreased mortality in, in um, certain types of cancers like breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer, which we know the most about, has been studied the most. Uh, we're still looking for evidence in terms of whether these kinds of interventions can improve um, certain side effects like peripheral neuropathy, um, pain, um, cardiotoxicity, or well, um, injury to the lung, lungs or heart. Um, but I think those, those types of um, findings and research are coming, they're, they're being pursued right now. Um, also, I think this whole field is becoming more and more individualized. So we used to say, again, we used to say avoid inactivity. Now we're saying do this amount of exercise. Next, I think we'll be saying, okay, for you, you need to do this type of exercise this many times a week, and this is what's going to get you to feel the better, the best, or get you the best outcomes. So I think we're just as all medicine is becoming more individualized. I believe that our knowledge about exercise and how it affects the um, the cancer experience will also become increasingly personalized or individualized. Great, thank you. And, you know, you know, just kind of popping up when you're talking about, you know, getting on the regimens and, you know, two to three days a week, et cetera. Do you recommend just jumping right into any kind of regimen or would you, you know, recommend starting it slow and easy? And, you know, when you're talking about resistance training, going right into resistance training or, you know, going in slowly with body weight exercises, et cetera. It's a great question. And uh, I often get that kind of question along with like, well, what exactly type, what type of exercise do you recommend? What should I be doing? Um, and I always say that the best exercise is the exercise that you enjoy doing. Um, so if there's something that you love to do, whether it's yoga, walking, bocce ball, whatever, whatever it is, um, whatever's going to get you to be active uh, because you enjoy doing that type of activity or exercise is the most important thing. That's step one. Um, in terms of safety and how to start to incorporate it, um, I think even if you've never exercised before, it's okay to start um, during your cancer treatment or after survivorship. Um, it's just you incorporate it slowly, um, certainly like brisk walking, even having something very light or minimal around the house and just doing a couple of either arm raises or shoulder raises can, is okay. Um, if you do have concerns, you can ask your, your provider, your physician, um, or ask the physical therapy team. They're, they're often very uh, well equipped to, to give you some guidance into what to do. But in general, exercise is much safer than I think we typically, than what our concerns may arise. Uh, exercise is much safer. And, and things like, um, actually my victory, the partner with, with this session, they make sure that they have um, guidelines in place in terms of what what type of intensity exercise would be beneficial for you. So um, certainly there's there's different levels in terms of getting involved, but I wouldn't let your um, concern about intensity and things like that prevent you from starting to to exercise or get involved. 
That's wonderful to know. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people can, that can do a lot with that information. Um, so tell me this, you know, when it comes to cancer related health outcomes, um, and specifically, you know, since, you know, this is the Melanoma Research Foundation and we're talking about melanoma and, you know, although we identify with a lot of subsets that are similar to all cancer survivors, there are some things that, you know, um, melanoma survivors specifically deal with more um, the same way that breast cancer survivors do, as we mentioned before, something like lymphedema um, or scarring or, you know, having to remove acral melanoma from the toe and missing a toe. Um, what kind of uh, health-related outcomes can be improved for melanoma patients with these exercises? Yeah, so I've, I've mentioned that, you know, the, the type of cancer that's been studied the most is certainly breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer. Um, that's where we have the most evidence behind. And some of that, you know, can be, you can translate over to some of the, the symptoms that you may be experiencing from a from a diagnosis of melanoma, depending on what your treatment is. So certainly things like lymphedema, we know that there are certain types of exercises that you can do um, to relieve um, lymphedema. And they're actually lymphedema certified specialists that can help guide you through some of those exercises and that, that physical therapy. Um, when I mentioned things like quality of life, fatigue, um, physical functioning overall, anxiety, depression, depression symptoms, those were primarily studied again in those three um, oncologic diagnoses or cancer diagnoses. However, when they have started to do more um, studies in other types of cancer, they've seen very, very similar results. So I believe that you know, a lot of what we're seeing in, in these other, in prostate, breast, and colon can be trans, will translate into other types of cancer as well, as long as we get the research done and, and start moving it forward. Similarly, the medical world tends to be very evidence-based. We go based off of um, scientific studies and papers and trials that are, are, are done. But to me, uh, while that's certainly important, I also find a lot, put a lot of importance in, and weight into anecdotal evidence, as I would say, or hearing other people's stories. And one of the things that I've found as I've learned more about exercise oncology and talked to more patients, is those who do stay physically active or, or exercise or find a, a group of individuals to remain active with certainly have better outcomes. And they can tell you their own personal stories about what it's helped them, how it's helped them and in different ways. So I would imagine if you, if there was a, a group of you watching today or watching um, a couple of days from now uh, who have remained physically active, you could probably share your stories about how much you felt that helped throughout your, your experience. Um, and so while maybe some of the scientific evidence is lagging behind, again, patients seem to be taking the lead here and sharing their own anecdotal uh, stories and evidence that, that there's lots of benefits to um, remaining physically active during and beyond your cancer treatment. That's amazing. I know sharing a story can really help to jumpstart another survivor's or case, cancer patient's um, next step in their in their journey because making them feel more comfortable about it. So you're absolutely correct on that. Um, I'd like to kind of address the elephant in the room right now, which is COVID-19. And, um, you know, because of COVID, even though there's some new promising uh, vaccines out there, many gyms are closed or some cancer patient survivors don't feel comfortable uh, going to the gym right now. And of course, compromised immune systems and, you know, masks and making sure that, you know, everyone is respecting the space around you and gyms tend to be very close. How do you see fitness, stre uh, fitness streaming platforms like My Victory uh, supporting the cancer community during these times? Yeah, COVID-19 has, has obviously presented a lot of challenges, and one of those certainly is getting um, out and about into the, to the gym or, or um, with friends and, and other individuals who you may be exercised with or walked with or um, remained active with. Uh, so it certainly has presented um, a challenge to this. Um, having said that, you know, trying to find the silver lining, it's also 
I think advanced some of the things that were coming already. I think at home fitness was on the rise prior to the pandemic. And then uh, when the pandemic came around, it's kind of just exploded. This whole industry has exploded. Um, and quite honestly, a lot of times um, cancer patients, depending on what kind of chemotherapy they're on, it may not be safe for them to go to the gym outside of COVID-19, outside of the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, it's important for us to find ways for individuals to be able to stay active uh, at home. And, you know, the, the My Victory platform is a really amazing resource uh, for individuals to take advantage of because it is directed towards uh, patients with cancer diagnosis and survivorship. Um, so the, the specific types of exercises um, are geared to improving your symptoms, uh, but also it creates this sense of community and camaraderie, which I don't think can be understated. Uh, knowing that you're doing these exercises uh, with a trainer, but also with other people across the country who are, are looking at the same kind of thing and going through the same experience, I think that's very, very powerful. And so the fact that we've been able to create that kind of environment and that culture um, online, sure, it's not the same as being next to somebody, um, but I think given the circumstances, these different online platforms have done a really, really incredible job of creating a sense of community. Um, and so in addition to just getting people and encouraging people and giving instructions to remain physically active, they've maintained this um, sense of community and camaraderie, which also is, is equally as important in my eyes um, about the benefits of exercise and fitness. Uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, electronic devices, televisions, computers, phones, that used to be what made us sedentary um, and was actually counterproductive, but now we can actually use these tools to, to keep us active and, and uh, make us make sure that we're staying, staying in motion and, and moving forward. So it's kind of cool how a, in a weird way, COVID-19 has made us, has allowed us to, to change the way that we use some of these platforms for the better. I would absolutely agree with that. Although I haven't taken my part to actually get up and, and use that at home um, fitness platform, but I need to because my victory is calling my name as a survivor. I know. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, something that I didn't mention before. I know you're you're very involved in advancing the field of exercise oncology, and you actually founded an organization called teamwork, which is T-M-W-R-K. Um, and their mission is to unite athletes against cancer. How do you find the interaction between what you're doing there and my victory? How does that kind of synchronize? And how can, I guess, those professional athletes help survivors like myself be confident enough in our, in our own bodies and everything that we've been through to get back out there um, in the exercise world? That's a, that's a really uh, great question. And it's actually, the reason I started teamwork is because I didn't, I didn't necessarily know the answers to questions that patients were, were asking me. Uh, my primary focus um, and interest is actually an adolescent and young adult oncology. And uh, being somebody who loves sports uh, and has participated in sports uh, throughout my life, I would often connect with uh, young people or uh, anybody really who, who shared this passion for sport with me. And uh, when they would get a cancer diagnosis, they would then ask me, okay, well, doc, what am, how much can I exercise moving forward? What should I expect? How is this gonna change my body image? And I didn't necessarily feel like I had the answers. And again, going back to patients leading the way, um, I felt like creating a source or a community for them to really share their experiences uh, and, and tell each other what to expect moving forward, how they remained active would be a, an important tool and a valuable tool for, for patients. And so I started to build this community through, as you mentioned, teamwork, um, T-M-W-R-K. Uh, and um, we also found that patients, although they could help each other um, by, per, by sharing their experiences, they also needed some guidance as well. And that's when I, I actually got introduced to my victory because they were performing or providing some of this guidance through their new online platform. Uh, and the more and more I spoke with um, higher level athletes, uh, we felt like their experiences of being at the top of their game, being extremely fit, 
um, taking care of their bodies and then getting hit with this cancer diagnosis, um, continuing to stay active and then getting back to their level of competition, we felt like, you know, that their message could speak, could transcend the world of sport and really speak to um, anybody who has a cancer diagnosis by recognizing the values and the benefits of having a team around you, the values of, again, staying active, releasing those natural endorphins to help you with your mental health, um, and then obviously the, the physical benefits of exercise throughout the cancer experience as well. So um, we didn't think that, that the athlete mentality or staying active or having a team should be exclusive just to these really incredible stories that we hear about on the news, um, but it could actually translate to anybody in their own personal cancer experience. And so that's when we decided to kind of branch out, use um, the My Victory platform as well, and try to extend these services and resources to others. That's phenomenal, but congratulations on that great work. Um, so, you know, obviously given your background in this field and your background in research, I mean, how important are safe at-home exercise options? So I do want to, I do want to uh, say that, you know, my expertise for this topic primarily comes from what I was just saying about my, my love and passion for sport and the power of sport. Um, and also with just working with patients and what, and the experiences that they've shared with me. Um, and then me just learning and reading all of the studies that have been out there and, and produced by a lot of my colleagues. So, you know, much of the research that's been done is actually by physicians, scientists, even uh, athletes and patients um, who have come before me. Uh, and my expertise, I guess I would say, is more based on um, becoming familiar with that literature and then talking to patients and kind of the, again, the anecdotal evidence that I, that I spoke of. Um, and so, but again, one of the things that I've really learned is how safe exercise can be and physical activity can be. And I think that's something that we were afraid of prior. And that's why our narrative used to be rest. We're going to treat you with these really challenging um, chemotherapy regimens. We need you to take a seat back and let us do the work. And we know that by exercising, you know, you get better delivery of blood, oxygen, and also the medicine to the places that it needs to go. So um, there are certainly benefits. Um, to it and uh, making sure that people can continue this at home, whether they're, you know, not, not necessarily only going to the gym or going to the hospital and getting physical therapy is really, really important. And um, my victory has provided that platform. Uh, there, it's interesting. I got connected with um, an exercise trainer in Texas who she used to have people come in and she would exercise, help guide them through exercise um, as part of their cancer treatment. And now that COVID set in, she hasn't been able to see them. So she's now has, uh, it's through the Moncrief Cancer Institute and her name is um, Lisa Ross. She's amazing. And now she like posts these videos of like a move of the day. So it, or move of the week. So it could be a yoga pose. It could be a dance move, anything to get people active and kind of come together. And so there are all of these new ways that we're finding uh, for people to have these safe at home exercise experiences um, that, it's, it's really important just to kind of, again, develop that community, have pe keep people with a positive frame of mind um, as we continue to kind of build out the research that we're doing. Um, I, so I think it, there's more for us to learn, but we already know that the, the benefits are there. And so having these safe ways to exercise at home is so important. I would absolutely agree with that. So I, I do have one more question, but I also wanna let everyone know watching that please feel free to ask questions. Um, if you just put your question for Dr. Terry or for the Melanoma Research Foundation in the comment section, um, we'll be more than happy to answer it for you. And so I guess, you know, we already addressed one elephant in the room and we'll say that there's a pair of elephants here today because the holidays are coming. Um, and with that, you know, we talked a lot about the physical limitations and, and that, that having a cancer diagnosis and living as a survivor can bring upon you, but it also can carry a lot of emotional um, weight on it as well. And especially with the holidays coming up, it can be a stressful time for many Americans, especially as I mentioned, those living or surviving cancers such as melanoma. What would you say are some of the best practices for wellness 
and mindfulness during the holidays? It is, it's been a challenging year to say the least. Um, and certainly with the holidays around the corner, well, here upon us, um, it's important to, to try to stay optimistic and, and really look after our own well being. And, you know, I, I think there's a tremendous connection, a very strong connection between the mind and body. So while I've rambled on and on and on about the benefits of physical activity um, throughout this session, mental health uh, is, is equally, if not even more important, because if the mind isn't right, then the body isn't going to um, follow the way that it should. And so certainly mindfulness and meditation, as you've mentioned, are extremely, extremely important. Um, and I would really encourage people to find the time and space. I think that's probably the biggest challenge is people just actually creating the time and space for them to uh, focus on their mental well-being um, and practicing mindfulness, meditation, whatever seems to work for you. Yoga um, is very helpful for individuals. Um, I, my mind is one that wanders all over the place, as you can tell throughout this session. And uh, I've tried to get into the practice of doing some meditation and mindfulness. And although it's challenging, there are certainly lots of apps and uh, programs out there that, that acknowledge that it's not an easy process, but that it's important. And I, I believe if you dedicate a little bit of time, create some space for yourself to explore these um, different options that uh, you'll see the benefits. And so I think creating the, creating the space for that during the holiday season is important because it's gonna translate into other decisions that you make, whether that is um, how you start your day, um, your mindset, um, how, much, how many um, goodies you eat during the holiday season, uh, or even how you're going to um, interact and, and keep up with friends. Um, I, and family. I think it's also important to, to recognize that with COVID-19 and the restrictions that are in place and the re recommendations that are in place, especially if you're immunosuppressed, um, it's important to, to be safe and keep your distance and not uh, fall into the trap of, of feeling like we're at the tail end of this, of this pandemic and that it's safe to get together with everybody. I think we need to be smart. And so getting creative if you're on Facebook live session, you can probably figure out how to do a Zoom session with your family. It's not the same, but it's better than nothing and we need to make the most of, of the situation we're in. So I would encourage you to one, create the space for yourself to have mindfulness and, and meditation or get your yoga, whatever is your therapy for um, getting your mind in a safe place and a good healthy place. And two, get creative about how you're going to experience the holidays with your friends, family, um, try and have some fun um, while also acknowledging that, you know, there's, there are certainly some challenges and some barriers um, and to not overstep them. Yeah, that, that is absolutely great advice. And we, you definitely right. We cannot forget the mental aspects to survivorship and the emotional issues that, that come with that. And, Everyone deals with it differently. And, you know, Dr. Terry is, you're absolutely correct when you say, just take a couple of minutes, whether it's three minutes in a quiet place, listening to the Calm app or rain sounds or what, I mean, I, every night I go to bed and I listen to rain sounds and that's my quiet time and my space to relax and wind down. And it really does help. And it kind of motivates me and energizes me for the next day. So even very simple things like that, I think you're absolutely right. And we're gonna talk a little bit more um, you know, after I get some questions from those who are watching about um, a, a yoga class coming up from my victory. So that's still to come. So stick around for that information. But we do have a couple questions um, that I want to go ahead and ask you from some of our viewers out there. Um, so the first one would be, where do you see the role of online exercise platforms developing for the cancer community in the coming years? So I know right now we have my victory um, and I'm sure they'll grow and respond, but where do you see it actually playing a bigger role? I'm, that's a great question. And I'm excited. I'm excited that you asked about it because I think one of, one of my, one of the things I feel most passionate about is that we need to have some cross industry collaboration to make sure that we're helping um, individuals as much as possible. So we can't be working in silos. I can't just be working at 
um, the hospital and seeing patients there without thinking about how when I ask them to go home and exercise, what I'm actually asking them to do and whether that's feasible or not. Um, so my victory is a tremendous platform that exists right now, but I think also some of these other um, at-home exercise equipment um, companies, I think we all know who they are when you turn on the TV and there's tons of commercials about them. I think they can come up with some uh, programming that's specifically designed for um, cancer patients. And um, I think we can collaborate on getting some research done so that we can, you know, get use these companies who are obviously um, providing an amazing service, maybe at a pretty hefty price tag um, to, to get them to come down on uh, not only their cost so that they can be more accessible, but also their reach. And so that we can focus on um, a subset of the population like cancer patients and things like that to make it um, more useful for them. I know that there are companies that are interested in doing that, but that's where I see kind of the future going is that some of these, um, some of these companies that are creating different really innovative and cool um, at home exercise equipment, um, then translating that and making it even more subspecialized for, for cancer patients. Uh, and I think by teaming up, we can again kind of move the needle forward in terms of individualizing exercise and that we recommend to patients. Great. Let's see. We have another question here. Uh, who should I go to about getting back into exercise? Would it be a personal trainer? a doctor, a mix of professionals, your whole care team? Who do we get involved in this? Unfortunately, so what I would say is that you should certainly check in with your oncology team. Um, even if your oncologist doesn't feel comfortable uh, giving specific recommendations, they can at least make sure that it's safe for you to do so. Um, again, I, I think overall the safety is most in most cases, it's going to be safe for you to do some level of activity, um, but certainly the physician knowing your your personal um, your personal status, functional status, and things like that is important. And so, I would go to them first, or at least mention it to them. Um, they often are connected with other uh, members of the support services team. So, physical therapists are very helpful in this. Social workers may know of community programs that you can get involved in. Um, the American College of Sports Medicine Moving Through Cancer Initiative um, gives some pretty good uh, basic outlines in terms of what to do and, and how to start to incorporate um, physical activity. Uh, and that's likely probably what your, um, that, that may be what your oncologist ultimately ends up referring to, to be honest. So the, again, Moving Through Cancer um, Initiative. Then there are other organizations like Livestrong. Uh, Livestrong has a program at the YMCA, local YMCAs, where they actually provide um, services and exercise instruction for survivors. Uh, so I would encourage you to look at that. And then um, hopefully we can, we can start to provide you with more and more resources. Um, but I would start with your oncologist. Also consider reaching out to the support team at your cancer center, so social worker, um, whoever's part of, part of that team there. Um, and then looking for other organizations that focus on this. So certainly we'll, we're gonna be hoping to provide a better online um, education source for you, going to Live Strong, uh, moving, to get, moving uh, with Cancer Initiative. I would say those are the best resources to refer to. Great, and I've got one more question for you. If you are a patient who has a setback, what do you tell them to help get them motivated to start exercising again? And I like that question because that's me. So, <laughs> uh, We've all been there. We've all been there, you know, and, that, and I think that's, that's part of what my message is, is that it's not uncommon or unusual for people to have um, a setback or for you to have a challenge come up where you're like, man, I need, I just need to get back into it, but I can't. Um, whether that's a setback, meaning that you know, the treatment that you are currently on is, isn't working quite as well as you had hoped um, or something else that you, you have a different kind of injury that prevents you from re remaining active. I think the most important thing, again, is, is trying to maintain that positive mentality. Um, even um, athletes who are, are totally healthy and playing their sport, they get injured. They know that they have to go back, go back 
through um, rehab and, and getting back to the field of play, you know, and that may include taking some time off at, at, at some point. You know, I, I think sometimes when I come, in, come on and start talking about exercise and physical activity, I sound like a personal trainer or something where I'm like, you got to go all the time, 100%. And re realistically, we know that's not the case. We know that some days you're going to have a bad day uh, and that you're going to need to rest. You may have a bad week and you need to rest for a week. That's okay. Um, the, the idea is that when you are feeling up for it, sometimes you may need to push yourself a little bit. Um, but also when you are feeling up for it, that you're acting on that energy or that emotion and that you're moving forward. Um, but know that it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to have a setback. Um, but make sure you surround yourself with a team that's going to keep you moving forward in the long run. Um, I think that's the, the most important thing. Having the mentality and having that team to reinforce the mentality is important. I absolutely agree with that. It's really hard to get back to it sometimes. And your brain might remember, I used to rock climb, your brain might remember one thing about how your body was, but your body may be completely differently at that point. And sometimes when you start going, there's a big disconnect there, but it's about going and continuing to try and being, I think, very, um, you know, giving yourself credit for the small steps that you make because those baby steps, you know, just as we're more toddlers, those baby steps turn into big steps and uh, can really go as long as you stick with it. Well, I wanna thank you so much for your expertise, Dr. Terry, and for all of your work with teamwork and your work with my victory and being on the board. I wanna remind everybody um, again about our partnership with My Victory, Be Active, Be Well. Um, the MRF has teamed up with them and friends of the MRF receive a six month free trial to My Victory and then only $10 a month after that. So 50% off, which is a big, big thing, uh, especially during the time of COVID um, and those struggling um, you know, with medical bills. Uh, again, My Victory is an online fitness and wellness platform specifically tailored for survivors. Uh, and they have live streaming classes every day. Over a thousand classes uh, are in their on demand library. And uh, they're adding about 30 to 40 new classes to their uh, library every week. So if you want to do that, use code MRF six months free when you're signing up. Again, MRF six months free, and you will get a Free six month trial and then $10 a month thereafter. And it's a great way to start. Um, I also want to remind everybody that on December 21st, uh, the holidays are right around the corner at 8 30 a.m. Eastern Time at uh, melanoma.research foundation, which is our tag for Facebook. So it'll be Facebook Live Yoga class uh, for survivors and thrivers and anybody who feels that they need. Uh, to bring uh, fitness back into their survivorship and or survival um, who are currently going through treatments again live on Facebook 8 30 a.m eastern time on December 21st and we can't wait to see you there and thank you again for joining us we're so grateful for your time and happy holidays thank you so much and I, I would just like to to say you know what um, my victory is an excellent organization um, offering a lot of great services. I do not have any financial obligation to them whatsoever. I'm just passionate about getting people to stay active. And so that's, that's why I um, work with them. There's no financial gain for me. Um, teamwork against cancer, TMWRK against cancer.org. Similarly, um, we're just trying to reach and help as many people as possible by building an online community. And we were a project that was sponsored by Active Against Cancer, it's A-K-T-I-V Against Cancer. And that's also a great resource for, um, for you guys to, to look for if you are interested in learning more about this. Um, and thank you so much to the Melanoma Research Foundation for having me on. This has been awesome. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I just want to remind everyone, we'll have these resources up on melanoma.org. So visit there and go to our survivorship page where we have a list of resources for you. And you'll be able to find all these links once we get them up, um, especially, you know, when we're talking about teamwork and some of the other resources you mentioned. So please uh, definitely go take a look at that and happy holidays again. Thanks, everyone.